check out this free video and make sure you hit like and subscribe. Jesse Cortez versus Kamala. So Gorilla says we're going to have words from Dak Jack Tunney concerning Kamala's chop rope splash and whether it be banned or not. We go to the inset and Tony says like three words and Bobby Heenan who was sitting next to Gorilla during commentary he storms into the inset he's crashed the inset he accuses Tony of leaking the details of Andre's reinstatement hearing specifically, specifically Bobby was there and Andre was not that was supposed to be under wraps he says I didn't say it Andre didn't say it you must have spilled the beans and we go back to the announcers Gorilla says Bobby Heenan what were you talking about Heenan replies you know Kamala weighs 406 pounds because Bobby Heenan is great. Uh, they plugged the fan club like crazy in the show, including Bobby Heenan reading off the phone number repeatedly, which I'm not do here. But uh, Kamala kills this guy, wins with a splash. So uh, this guy was actually in the movie Ed Wood. Oh, is this guy in the mask? Yes. Sean Sean has a picture so, of George Steele. In the uh, yeah, two people on this show were in Tim Burton's Ed Wood. And George Animal Steele played Tor Johnson in that movie, who was uh, the monster in... Yeah. Uh, Plan 9 from Outer Space. Well, before, uh, Tor Johnson was a Swedish wrestler where Ed Wood saw him. And in the movie, he's wrestling this dude in a mask, which was Jesse, Corti Je Jesse Cortez. How about that? Wow. Yeah. George Steele did a great job as Tor Johnson. He did. It's a great movie. movie. It was a great movie. Yeah. Bride of the Monsters, one of my favorite scenes when he walks into the door frame and shakes the whole thing. And Ed's like, uh, run it. I <laughs> <laughs> I gotta watch that movie again. It was a great movie. That was a good movie. Yeah. Resnick interviews Coco Beware, who announces that Frankie's going to Hollywood. Wow. Hope he gets a chance to relax. I hope so. Uh, the promo is that Frankie's got a girlfriend, which Coco thinks might be his sister. Frankie loves to kiss, especially fine foxy ladies. Let's do the bird, Frankie. Just this is like, not a very uh, good promo either. Um, he he did this exact same promo like two weeks ago. It, it, yeah, they probably just played this on a loop. There's only four more challenge episodes on Peacock. Okay. So uh, once we get to the end, we got to make that big decision. Are we going to do prime time through WrestleMania or are we done? Don't, don't answer now. Yeah, we got, we got time. We all know the answer. <laughs> we got time. Jerry Monty versus Harley Race. Junkyard Dog doesn't answer. He vows the king will be dethroned by the dog. Took him four seconds, threw out a challenge. Boom. You know, this Harley race is like so washed up and past his prime, and he is still fucking great. Yes. I had more fun watching him than anybody else on this show. Everything he does is so, like, technically perfect, and, you know, he, he doesn't break a sweat at all. He just pummels this guy. He drops the knees. They look great. He hits that suplex with the twist because he can't do a bridge, but he still makes sure his shoulders... I mean, he's so good, but he's just a silly guy with a crown in WWF, and, uh, eh, what can you do? And describe this uh, Jerry Monty guy. He looks like uh, Billy Mays, the infomercial guy. <laughs> Remember uh, him selling the... Yeah, so he looks like this guy, and as you mentioned, like Harley Race was so awesome. And Monty was so horrible. There was a part where Holly Race gave him this headbutt, and there was a good, like, one-second pause, and then he took the bump. It was horrendous. <laughs> but Harley was great. Harley was awesome. They introduced Jerry Monty as hitting from San Francisco. Oh, and, yes. And Johnny V says, well, if he's from San Francisco, nah, never mind. <laughs> wow. He censored himself. Huh. So the snake pit, the guest is Butch Reed. He was mumbling about nothing. I think he said he was going to beat people up in a Carolina ring. I don't know maybe that's who they were. To be a legend. Jake says, you must be a legend. Who do you have in your sights? So Butch Reed calls out Hulk Hogan. Actually, no, Vinny. Okay. He, he didn't call out Hulk Hogan. He just said, I want to go to the top. Y'all know who's at the top. I'm going for the top. <laughs> and finally, Jake goes, you must mean Hulk Hogan. Yes. And I was like, did you forget his name or... <laughs> Is it that hard to say Hulk Hogan? I think apparently it was. I think he you're couldn't right. spit it out. Because even after this, Butch Reed is rambling on, losing his train of thought. Jake just cuts him off and takes over. Yes. And cuts the promo for him. This Butch Reed one run was so horrible mm. in every way. I can't believe it lasted all the way to Mania. They put they put him over at Mania. He wins on that show. Yes. Spoiler alert. How can you 
can this be the same guy that was in Doom? Five years later. It's not like Doom was... Because he also had Ron Simmons. <laughs> and that helped. Well, <laughs> that certainly helped. But yes, we Doom's in the far future. Yeah. He, he, I, I, well, you know, people go through things. Maybe he had some... They recover. ...demons to battle. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Recovery, you say? Uh, yeah. Rehabilitating no, things, I, perhaps, yeah. You know, another sure. thing that Bleach you mentioned earlier that we should hammer home is, once again, and we've mentioned every week... When we started reviewing these things, everybody's memory was this subtle angle they did with Bobby Heenan and Andre the Giant. It is not subtle at all. It is a centerpiece of every single... Like, they're hammering you with this story. So we'll get the... Uh, I mean, it should be coming soon. I mean, we're only a couple of weeks... A couple I, that's not my thing. Mania. We got like two months. Twelve weeks in which they, yeah. have to do, they have to do Hogan getting the trophy, Andre getting the smaller trophy... They do the angle in Piper's Pit, the one we've all seen. There's like a contract signing. There's the Battle Royal on Saturday Night's Main Event. There's a lot of stuff that happens in these next three months. Yeah. And it hasn't really started yet. There's just been teases. We have a Mean Gene update. He's That'd at a be desk. pretty well done, actually. It's actually really well done, but it's just funny. It's so stereotypical 1980s news set. He's sitting at a desk... The wall behind him just reads December slash January over and over again. Like eight lines of this. Because he's doing Weekend Update. Basically, yeah. It's yeah. the exact same set with the Weekend Update over and over again. Yeah. So the update editors have ordered this review of the Randy Savage, Ricky Steamboat situation. They show the axe handle across the barricade, the bell across the throat, the face of the dragon turned blue as paramedics wheeled him out of the arena. So Bruno Sammartino that night, was uh, he was on commentary was sent to try to get an update. Can't believe what he has seen. Nothing so gruesome in all his years of wrestling. Steamboat can't breathe. They had to put a tube down his throat. And uh, no one will give him a straight answer as to what's going on. So this led to, by the way, side, side, uh, side point, at some point, Bruno confronts Savage and is so furious he attacks him. And they did San Martino versus Savage around the loop before before me. Wow. So that's, that's the setup there. So we have Mean Gene talking to Dr. Bob Ponovich. I believe we've aired this one before. But they talk about his crushed larynx, his vital signs. The doctor confirms he was near death at one time there. Wow. My opinion is that his wrestling career is over. And Gene looks at him and sternly says, Dr. Ponovich, I thank you. <laughs> so the cameras then catch up with Ricky Steamboat at home. There was promos somewhere on one of these shows, Primetime or Superstars, whatever the hell they did. But they actually had like Steamboat sitting down with a speech therapist. Yeah. Who's like saying, E, E, and Steve was going, eh, eh, and he freaks out and bangs the table, eh, he can't do the E sound. Here he is mostly talking fine. He coughs a little bit, he grabs his throat, it's sore, but he cuts a fiery promo, promises that before he's done, Randy Savage will have suffered. You know, we look at WrestleMania 3, and what are the two most famous matches from Mania 3? They're Hogan and Andre and Savage and Steamboat. And, you know, watching the last four months or whatever we've watched, those are the most heavily pushed programs. I mean, every week we hear something about Randy Savage and Ricky Steamboat. Every week we hear something about, about Andre the Giant and Bobby Heenan. So, I mean, they had a direction and they, they went full bore on it. Why don't we start reading some questions <laughs> and we'll see if we can spur some answers out of Granny. Shall we try? I don't think so. Let's try. <laughs> then then you'll really find out how dumb I am. Granny, did you know there was a wrestling bear? I uh, know, <laughs> and I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's a bear that wrestled people. I still don't care. Okay. What is your favorite breakfast cereal of all time? What's your favorite cereal, Granny? You know what cereal is? I can't eat it. Fruit Islands. S'mores Crunch, Rocky Road, Original Recipe, Cookie Crisp, and of course all the video game inspired cereals like Super Mario and and Donkey Kong, and there was a Nerds cereal, cereal that tasted like candy. There's two bags inside the box, and one was grape and one was cherry. Oh, it was great. Dunkin' Donuts had an excellent cereal for a while. These are all gone. These are all gone. What is your least favorite pizza brand? Little Caesars. The answer is Little right. Caesars. There used to be a, a great, great pizza throughout the Northwest called Pietro's Pizza. Every memory of yours is about something from the deep past that your sad is no longer around. Yeah. I yeah, they could be all my favorite food. Just go to Mod Pizza and love it. This sounds good. Is Granny frozen? 
Granny, you frozen? No, I'm ready to read my report. Your picture is frozen. It is? Yeah. Or you're doing a great job as a ventriloquist. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.